I was picking up on many of the themes that we've heard over the last two days. And uh, what I was talking about is how important it is that the non-executive director should be uh, carrying out their function of holding uh, the executive to account, providing support, providing challenge, uh, warning when appropriate, uh, and ensuring that the technical, the expert's knowledge is championed at the board, taken into account by the board. And that involves working very closely outside board meetings with the CISO or the CIRO, building that level of confidence. And particularly when it comes to information security, that would normally be the preserve of the audit committee. But in some organisations like NHS Digital, it was so critical to the business function that there was a dedicated information assurance and integrity subcommittee of the board. And that uh, technical experts felt very much more relaxed about coming and sharing their concerns, uh, whereas they were reluctant to do it sometimes in the full board. The importance of recognising there's no such thing as cybersecurity. Uh, it's all about how organisations manage information insecurity and ensure that they are, their appropriate precautions are in place to ensure that uh, those, um, for whatever reason, uh, whether it's the integrity of the data is corrupted or it's uh, lost or compromised in some other way, uh, all, everybody knows exactly what they're going to be doing. And the role of the non-executive in making sure that, as I say, the, um, the voice of the technical experts are heard, uh, that they are ventilated with the board, uh, but ultimately it's for the executive who run the organisation to take decisions, informed decisions, on the direction of travel. And it's to ensure that the, the expertise of the, the, the CIRO or the CISO is put before the board, is properly addressed, and uh, informed decisions are, taking, are taken about the direct, direction of travel. It's all about leadership. Uh, leadership is, the mark of a good leader is the team you leave behind. And so you are investing in uh, recruiting, attracting, supporting the right people with the right expertise and ensuring that they get a hearing in front of the leaders. And people say, uh, do you need to be a technical expert? technical expert to be a non-executive? I don't think so. Uh, in fact, there's a downside of being a technical expert because you're at risk of getting into groupthink with the technical experts and not asking the challenging question which uh, a conscientious non-executive director might be reluctant to ask because you're the expert and they don't want to ask a stupid question. There can only be two answers to what the question. One is an explanation to the complete satisfaction of the individual who asked it in the language they understand, or thank you for exposing something we haven't thought about. I hate, I hate the word cybersecurity. Uh, people of my generation remember hiding behind the sofa when the Cybermen came on Doctor Who. Uh, it, it's a real, it puts people off, it's threatening. It's, well, what is this cyber thing? It, it's all about information, assurance, and integrity. What is the organization doing to make sure that those critical, uh, critical assets, the critical data, the critical information to their core business is protected? It's just like any other business risk. So labeling it as cyber security, I think, implies that there's something special about it. What we have to do is make sure that the, the principles of, of good governance, of business leadership, uh, are, uh, take into account the concerns that the technic technical experts have. And uh, ensuring that, uh, hopefully, what the uh, MBA here will do is avoid going down the track of, you know, cyber security is special, and say, no, actually, it's just like any other business risk. Uh, and 
Uh, therefore, um, d don't put it in a special box, but make sure that it's taken into account as part of the totality of the board's governance uh, debate and, and, and conversations. <clears throat> I don't think cyber leadership is special. Uh, it's all about leadership. Uh, and um, very often in organizations, particularly at the senior level, people lay down policies and instructions uh, and which they expect others to follow, but think it doesn't apply to them. So again, I think seeing cyber leadership as different from leadership, which is basically inspiring people to do uh, the right things and things that they never imagined individually they could have done, uh, that's what leadership is, is about. And again, you know, the mark of a good leader is the team you leave behind. And whether that's in cyber or in finance or in engineering, it should apply. Leaving it cyber security, just to me, says this is special. It ain't. Uh, yes, there is. There's a huge shortfall. Uh, public, private sector. Um, I think that uh, the creation of the Cyber Security Council, I think, is a, uh, is a result of, of what um, things like the Information Advisory, um, Information Assurance Advisory Council, IAC, have been pushing for a long time. Uh, that has actually got traction. Um, there is a there is a huge a huge shortage of this, but um, I think uh, very often people think about you have to go to the, the technical colleges to get people with the technical information. Um, actually, what you need in a cybersecurity person is someone who can absorb information, draw conclusions, and apply it. And it's those the, the sort of neurodiversity of of, of arts graduates, of historians, who are able to do that. You can, you can train them up in those techniques and they'll be better than, very often, the pure technical people. Um, and it's encouraging that uh, this is starting to be recognized, I think. There, what, what is going on at Lancaster is, is great. Um, and uh, it, there's a huge opportunity uh, to do the sort of thing, and I, and I really welcome the, the uh, uh, cyber security MBA, just don't call it something else. <laughs>